Today, I'm laying track. Finally, it seems like everything up to this point was the most important thing to be doing. You know, bench work, uh, getting the plywood down, foam, cork roadbed, uh, to the foam between the plywood and the cork so the expansion and contraction of the wood won't affect the rails. And that's especially important to me out here in my garage. However, uh, all that is now in place, so let's lay some track. So here's what we need. We need track, we need connectors, we need plastic connectors, dikes, clippers, nippers, crimpers, wire, soldering gun, solder, sponge, terminal block. Now I lucked out when I got the roll of cork from Michaels because it's the same thickness as the track road bed. So I figured I'd just drop the whole cork in the area where I want the yard. So I got some paper, taped it together, and made myself a pattern of where the yard will be. And I used that paper pattern to lay over top of the cork, draw it out, cut it out, and put the cork in place. So I had the spot where the ladder would go and glued the cork down, got it put into place, and uh, I'm good to go. So what's nice about it is since it's the same thickness as the cork road bed, uh, it just fits up there flush and I'm going to put ballast down and so the color difference isn't going to be a bit of a difference at all because it's all going to be buried under things later on. So I've got a yard in place, something that I haven't had ever before that uh, I'm really looking forward to having. And then I started working on the arrival departure track. And since I'm using DC um, as the power supply instead of DCC, I need to isolate sections of the track. So with the insulated rail joiners, I put it in here uh, for the arrival departure track coming in and on the other side going out. Uh, and then I have the flex track. Now the flex track is interesting because as you can see, one side of it is missing the plastic between the ties. The other side has a solid plastic, uh, at least on the Atlas. So you can then bend and move it to uh, flex, like uh, the name implies with the flex track. And then to get the rail joiners to fit, to cut off the ends of the ties, the last one or two uh, tie-ins, so it'll fit. And then as you flex it, uh, one rail will get shorter and the other one longer as, the, as they're two different radii as it goes around the, the bends and things. So uh, then you take your nit rail nippers and take care of it. And what I did here is I just dropped in some brads to hold it into place. And then of course the 050 to uh, run the cars over the connections to make sure they're good. So where the box car and the passenger car is, is my other set of rail joiners in, in, uh, insulated. So that section of track has its own dedicated power to that, just that section that I can turn on and off. Same thing down here on the other end, uh, going into the yard. Now I'm working on the inner loop right here. And again, I cut off the ends of the, the ties off the ends of it, and I drop them in the gondola car there, uh, to keep track of them all because as you can see, there's gaps where I put the stuff together and you want don't want that later on when you get the model going. So I'm saving the rail ties to put in to where they've been cut off and they'll be glued down uh, with the ballast. So I use these brads uh, to uh, hold the track into place temporarily. Uh, the whole idea is later on I'm going to ballast this anyway and with it ballasted then uh, that works just like the prototype. The, you glue the ballast down and it holds it all in place and keeps it uh, in place just like the prototype does. One caveat I have for the br brad putting them in is don't push them down too tight because that will bring the track out of gauge and cause uh, the trains and that to derail. Another caveat is using the nippers to set your track in place. Problem, I did this one backward. I should have had them turned around the other way. Uh, the part you want to keep, you have the nippers facing because it leaves a, a little bit of an edge and you can see that there. Uh, but anyway, uh, I had it, should have had it turned the other way because that's the part I want to keep facing what you want to keep. So you 
nip off the uh, ties, save them to put in the gaps later on so when you ballast the ties are all there and it doesn't look strange having these big gaps where the ties ought to be. And that's, uh, that does it. So you nip it, put it in place, get it to fit. I kept a little bit of a uh, gap between all my joints so when the summer comes uh, the train shouldn't derail. So getting the turnout lined up and then I drop toothpicks in to where I'm going to need to drill the holes and where I'm going to solder the wires in. So you solder up top and then you use blocks and connectors underneath the layout instead of soldering under the layout. So you want to solder on top and, and uh, use connectors underneath. So then uh, since the yard is going to be independent of the loops, I'm putting switches in and I'm just going to drill them into the fascia on the front of the layout and label them. And then I can just turn switches on and off on the front of the layout where the engines will be where the power goes in and then I can just visually know where the power is for the sections of track and label it and, and take care of it there. So I just go through and figured out where all the electrical switches need to go, marked them off, drilled the holes and then uh, I'll get the wiring here in a minute and uh, go through and figure out the wire going from the rail to the switch, nip it, attach it to the switch, and then uh, run the wire on down to the terminal block. So I pulled the wire through, I took some uh, ethernet cable that I had at work that uh, was just kind of scrap. So I took it and tore it apart to use the, the wires in that, soldered it to the rails, and uh, I learned that I need to let the soldering iron heat up before I use it. And then I got my switch. And then uh, the white is the negative and the orange in this case is the positive. So I cut the orange wire. And the part to the left of the nippers is going to the rail. And the part to the right of the nippers is going to the terminal block which will complete the circuit obviously and I'm not a real good electrician so I'm not going to go through and show everything but I did get uh, my wire strippers and strip the wire off and I got some connectors and tried to crimp the connectors and after a couple of them and the mess it was making I just decided to wrap the wire around the uh, screw heads on the switch and just wired in that way but uh, it works out really nice and uh, funny story I'll tell on myself when I was testing it out I was running the train around onto the arrival departure track and it stopped and I thought oh no what did I do wrong and it turns out I had the switch in the off position I flipped it onto the on and it worked so good old test here get the power Turn on the thing for engine one and where the engine house will be, give a little bit of juice, and voila, the engine's on its way. Then I parked it, tried the other engine that I have, and lo and behold, I'm able to have two or three locomotives on the tracks at the same time. I can now block the power out, run this up to the west end of the arrival departure track, shut the power off on it, and then I can turn the power on down here and fire up that engine on the uh, uh, lead going out of the yard, if you will, and I can start building trains. So I've got more wiring to do and more track to lay and bridges to build, so uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. If this was helpful, hit that like button. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, go ahead and hit subscribe and that bell notification. And until then, next time I come around, keep on keeping on.